Paula and Michael, how are you guys doing? How's it been so far here in Manchester? We'll start with you, Paula. Hello? Oh. Hello? There we ah, go. hola, hola. Hi. Um, it's been amazing. This is my first time in the UK. Um, and I've had way too much fun. <laughs> way too much fun. Good. So I need to get sleep when I get home. Because yes. I'm going to keep having fun. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's been a beautiful time here in Manchester. Yes. The fans are very happy you guys came all this way. And I've been noticing, Michael, you have got a lot of Marvel Universe fans that are coming up to you. I think I just saw you with a giant Captain America shield. So tell us about being in the Marvel Universe. Actually, this is my first time back in the UK since working on uh, the Marvel Universe. Um, but no, uh, it's been a fun ride and uh, a joy to be a part of that world. Absolutely. And there's so many franchises to see here. We've got Star Wars fans. We've got uh, Stranger Things fans. And of course, most of you guys are in love with The Walking Dead. Am I right? That has been some of the best cosplay we've ever seen from The Walking Dead. First of all, tell us all if you wouldn't mind, and then we're going to go to you guys. There is a microphone there, so in just a few minutes, we're going to get interactive with you. But tell us how you guys uh, got the roles in The Walking Dead and how it came about in your career. How you got the roles in The Walking Dead, how it came about that you're part of the show. I don't know. Or, even better, because we all fan out over certain things, right? So me, for example, I do love Walking Dead. I love the Marvel Universe. I love Harry Potter. What are you guys fans of? There's a oh. lot to choose from here, right? Oh, yeah. Um, there's a show. Hi. Look at this cute little boy. Hi. Um, there's a show uh, called Money Heist. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was, it was absolutely incredible. I was like completely obsessed with that. Um, and what else am I a fan of? Um, currently Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer has been... Anybody here seen Demon Slayer? Woo! Tanjiro. Tanjiro is my favorite character, obviously. And Nezuko is awesome. But that's, that's what I've been really into lately. So most of you would never guess, but I am a huge, huge Harry Potter fan. Woo! Um, yeah, I kind of grew up on the witchcraft and wizardry, and uh, I'm an avid goer to the Universal theme parks. Yes. And player of Hogwarts Legacy. Um, yeah, total nerd for Harry Potter. Woo! And a lot of Harry Potter cosplay as well. I don't know if you guys have seen, we've got a lot of movie props, film props, Stranger Things, Only Fools and Horses. But what are you guys currently watching? Whether it's Netflix or whether you're traveling, what are you into right now? What's striking your fancy, TV and film-wise? Been taking a break from TV and film, you know. Um, these days we're striking for a better union, but... I don't know if you guys have ever uh, listened to uh, Lex Friedman's podcast. Uh, he has a dope podcast available on YouTube where he talks to different uh, people from fields in science, um, tech, and uh, he has a new one out with uh, a few uh, with Zuckerberg where he kind of digs into AI and the and the I guess the uh, perils of this new technology. So Lex Friedman podcast is really great. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, can I get back to you on that one? Yes. It's one of those things that Netflix goes, are you still watching? That's how you know you love a show, I right? Know, I know. It's like, yeah. let me mind my business. I'm still watching, yes. How about any games, guys? Are you video gamers at all? Or were you when, when you were growing up? Uh, I just started playing Diablo 4. Ooh. Anybody play Diablo? PS5? Xbox? Wow. No? You guys got to play Diablo. It's, it's amazing. And obviously, uh, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, beautiful show. But most of the time when I'm playing it, I just take screenshots of it. You know, in the Nintendo Switch, you can take pictures of what you're seeing. That's all I do. I'm like, I'm not even playing. I'm just taking pictures of beautiful scenery. It's you're incredible. Just, the graphics that these people have designed are, are absolutely stunning. You're more like a video game photographer, if you will. Scenic photographer. Exactly. Scenic photographer of, of Zelda. Put that on the resume. 
I will. Why not? I will. What about you, Michael? Any games that you grew up with or that you're currently playing? You said you liked Hogwarts Legacy, which is a stunning game as well. Oh, yeah. Um, fully immersive world. And, yeah, I kind of took the dark wizarding trail, and I just unlocked the uh, unforgivable curses. So I've been running around Hogsmeade, you know, throwing some curses at people. <laughs> I can't with you. Nah, it's fun. It's good fun. I gotta try it. Do they have it on Nintendo Switch? Uh, it's coming to Switch soon, actually. Oh. But it's better on PS5. The graphics are insane. Okay, but I don't have a PS5. And I don't have the money for it right well, now, can, either. You can come to the crib. Okay, hey. I'm coming to visit you. Let's all go over and play video Hell games. Yeah. Yay! Just invite the whole of Manchester. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm well, down. guys, what... It's what, a party. Obviously, you're here in Manchester with your adoring fans, but everyone has to start somewhere. What got you into this crazy, wild entertainment business? Was it something that you always wanted to do, or did you kind of fall into it in terms of entertainment? I was always a very hyper kid with ADHD, so I was just like, ah, all the time, and my parents had no idea what to do with me. Um, so I was always into like music and writing and acting and all of that, but what really got me into it was writing. I, was a, I, I used to write poetry when I was a kid, and my mom used to make me perform it for my family when they would come over for dinner and stuff like that, and I think that's where it all started, and, and then I didn't stop. I, I can't imagine myself doing anything other than this. I don't think I'd be successful at anything other than this. Trust me. I actually, I was a pretty nerdy kid. I grew up reading comic books. I loved image comic books, like Witchblade, um, anything Michael Turner laid his hands on, like I was a big fan of, and that led to me uh, doing theater. And somehow the two worlds combined, and I'm playing comic book characters on screen, and yeah, I grew up like just a comic nerd. You are in the right place then, for sure. Amen. Yes. This is where the fans and dare we say geeks and nerds unite. Am I right, guys? We all Woo! love something. We all have that in common, and that's why we're here, for sure. Now, Hell we yeah. have a lot of aspiring actors and creatives in the crowd, whether it's directors. We talked to a couple people today that were just starting in theater school. What advice would you give to them when it comes to joining this crazy entertainment business? Was there any advice maybe given to you that you took to heart? Um, I always say, like, be yourself. Um, and confidence. Confidence is key with this. Like, for me, it, it's just so important and such a hard thing to work on. You have to work on it every day about being confident in yourself, being good to yourself too, and then bringing your whole self into an audition room. I think, it, I think people nowadays want to see themselves reflected on television. They want to see characters that look like them, that act like them. So if you're true to yourself, Somebody will see that and somebody will see themselves in you and I think there's I think there's nothing more beautiful than than representation in that sense. Yeah That deserves a round of applause. Yes. Thank you. We're going Thank in a much, much better direction Thank with you. that. I think yeah. Thank you Yeah um, As an actor you kind of come into the, the business thinking oh, I have to be something or I have to like uh, Give them what they want and what you find out as you can continue the road is that all, all the, the odd things about yourself that maybe you're ashamed of or you may be a little shy about, those things actually come forth in your work and that's what makes you relatable as a, a human being or a character on screen because people see that and they're like, oh, that's a part of me, that little shy quality or that anger, you know, all those things reflect back and um, make the character more relatable. But I think in terms of my journey, like, you just never stop. You, you eat, sleep, and breathe it, and you find those who do the same, and you surround yourself with that energy, and you just keep pushing. Yeah. Um, there's no end to the road. It's always an ongoing journey of evolution and crafting and building yourself. Um, and I, I just wanna say, if anybody here has ever been through getting bullied, or somebody who's bullying you. I just want to tell you that everything I got bullied for when I was a kid has been what made, what's made me successful today. Amen. Yeah. So, so don't, let them, don't let them bring you down and make you feel bad about yourself because those qualities are what make you who you are and you'll see that when you grow up, you'll realize, man, they were wrong, they were wrong and everything, again, everything I was bullied for when I was a kid 
has got me to this stage right now. Very beautifully said. Thank you. I think, as I was just told, we're not going to take fan questions right now, but I do apologize for that. That's my bad. Uh, question, though, but going back to acting, were there people that you were watching growing up or even now that inspire you on the screen, whether it's, you know, someone that you wanted to emulate or someone perhaps that you worked with that inspired you in terms of becoming a better performer? I mean, for me, definitely the original Mr. Bean, like the original yeah. old school Mr. Bean, not the American remakes and whatever, the original old school. I just remember being mesmerized by his character work and just rewinding and watching again. And it's just, I don't know if you guys remember the, the episode where he's in a church and he has, a, he has a mint in his pocket and then he has to sneeze. He has to sneeze in the middle of church and he doesn't know what to do. So he just sneezes into his hand and then it's like all full of like snot. And then he's like, what do I do now? And then he puts his hand in the pocket to like kind of clean it. And then like minutes pass and he forgets and he's like, oh, I want my mint. And then he goes like, it's so good. But just the simplicity of that character and his commitment to that character that has brought us a lot of us so much joy. Definitely one of the people that I've just like, yeah. Yes, round of applause for Mr. Bean. Yes. Why yes, not? Please. We're in Mr. Bean country, sort of. Yeah. Tough question. Um, I, I guess growing up, like seeing actors like Wesley Snipes and uh, hell yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> He's the man. Um, Denzel Washington. These uh, oh, yeah. alpha males, but you know, Eddie Murphy, and they all kind of found their own lane and uh, realm of expression as like black male artists. And as a kid growing up, just seeing that breadth of um, variety in their performances and the chances they took, it was inspiring to me yeah. um, as a young black male, like coming up in, in the States. Very well said. Yes. Now, you said Wesley Snipes is the man, but have you seen him in Tu Wong Fu? He, he's the man in a dress. He is. It takes he's the a man. real man to put on a dress and some heels, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wesley Snipes in drag. We highly recommend it. Tu Wong Fu. Yes. A few cheers for Tu Wong Fu there. Now tell us, guys, about um, your personal lives outside of the business. Nothing too personal, but just uh -oh. amongst friends here. Uh, tell us what you're looking forward to after Comic Con Manchester, professionally or personally. What's going on after this? Um, I've been working on some music. Uh, so, so I'm really excited about that. I'm working on an album with a friend whose name is KJ and uh, spending some time recording and having so much fun with that. Um, also a lot of writing and hopefully in the future one of my plays into a movie, um, trying to work on that. Um, but definitely the music has been my especially because the writers are strike, the writers guild is on strike and the actors guild. Um, so I'm really concentrating on some music and, and getting that out of myself, you know? It's, it's been very inspiring and exciting. Well, we certainly won't put you on the spot and make you perform, but I will ask if you can elaborate on the type of music that it is and sort of maybe who's inspired it. Um, I think it's a mixture of hip hop and uh, both Spanish and English and kind of like blues type of vibe, but like all mixed up together. Yeah, I've, I've just been dabbling in a bunch of different genres that I love. I'm a very big reggae fan yes. and ska fan. Um, and the UK has a great legacy of ska music. Um, so just a little bit of, of all of it, really. It's been awesome. Thank you, thank you. Michael, when's your album dropping? <laughs> yeah, when's the album drop? Oh, oh, uh, I don't know. I gotta work more. <laughs> Michael, you have an album coming out as well? You're gonna drop some sick beats on us? He has some awesome music. <laughs> See? Oh, yes, he does. You know, um, this summer has been great and challenging at the same time. You know, we're striking for a better union, and in that time, I've kind of like taken a moment for myself to like reevaluate what I want to do personally as an artist. And like they were saying, I've been working on music. That's definitely um, one of my passions. But lately I've been trying to develop and rally together my writer friends to create independent films 
that we've kind of been sitting on because, you know, the industry is doing its thing and it's a moment for us to like take ownership of our careers and our lives and not have to wait for uh, a hand to reach down and, and give you the job, you know? So I got a couple films that are pretty uh, exciting that I've been developing as well as writing some, uh, some hip hop and R&B. Uh, yeah. Should be, I might drop something in the fall. It's coming soon. Hey. And who's inspired you musically? It's a wide variety. Um, I got an extensive record collection. So, like, one of my biggest, uh, I have a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire, a lot of uh, D'Angelo's work, yeah. R&B soul kind of vibe, um, a bit of Muse, a little fuck you to the system. Um, let's see. <laughs> And most recently, it's kind of dorky, but Dua Lipa kind of like hits a little bit. Yeah, like, she's a little vibe, yeah. Oh, she's awesome, she's awesome. Any Dua Lipa fans in the crowd? Yeah, the girls are like, yeah, Dua Lipa. We Come love on. to hear that. Disco pop. Yeah. Yes, well before we let you go guys, by the way, they are gonna be doing more autographs and photo ops right here at Comic-Con Manchester. Any words of encouragement for the fans? By the way, Paula, so cool of you to bring up, you know, some words of confidence for the fans here, but anything you wanna leave your fans with here in Manchester? Any final thoughts? Like we're on Jerry Springer. I got one. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know if any of you need to hear this today, but love yourself today. Just try it out today because we're so mean to ourselves, a lot of us. So just try to be good to yourself today, just for today. Just be nice to yourself. Love that. Bravo. You know, it's such a joy to be here at this convention, at any convention, because it's a place where everyone comes and they are the, their authentic self. Yeah. I'm gonna dress up, I'm gonna like, do the thing I want to do and be around people that accept that. Yes. And it's just a great energy to be a part of. Yeah. And I support all of you guys in, in, in your expression of yourself. Woo! Love that, yes. We are going to wish you guys continued success and thank you for making so many memories here with the fans in Manchester. Manchester, give it up one more time for Woo! Micah and Paolo! Woo!